know if, I don't know if this is still true. If anybody has any other information, please share share with us. But there was no fiddlers at any bait shop in Jacksonville. No fiddler crabs whatsoever. So I stopped and grabbed some uh, dead shrimp and decided to try that because maybe I can still get some black drum or something. Uh, went to the rocks. I was on the south end of the rocks over at the naval base, and nada, nothing. I got I got a stone crab and a yellow mouth trout. And all the boats that I saw were all on the north side of the rocks. So maybe that was my problem. I don't know. I know you can get sheephead there. Uh, I've seen it done before, but it just wasn't happening for me on my day off. I decided to go. So uh, that's a little update on that. Um, there's they are out there. It's a little bit warmer day. I, I don't know if that had to do with it. And also, uh, the bad luck I had, it was a full moon, so I'm sure that definitely has something to do with it. Uh, that's really all I have for the salt water. Uh, big water, or big open water, like the lakes in St. John's, I haven't had a chance to really get out on any of the lakes or the rivers because uh, the bass boat, I'm currently, I currently have it down for wintertime maintenance and some upgrades I'm doing. I have a bunch of videos that I need to get edited for that and get up. Uh, cause what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing a boat upgrades kind of video, you know, keeping your bass boat alive kind of deal. If you have an older one like me, uh, so here, Bubba, you got anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess running through same kind of report deal talking about, um, you yeah, we were talking about fishing reports earlier. I did see a lot of people say that the, uh, jetties rocks have been kind of up and down with weather. Uh, like it was on fire and it cooled down with cold front and full moon and kind of stuff like that. Um, me and Joe actually are going tomorrow saltwater fishing out to the river, uh, hoping to get on some yellowmouth. We're going grocery, grocery fishing. Uh, right. But on that note, it uh, what I've been hearing hadn't been saltwater fishing. Uh, the inshore bull reds are kind of moving out. There's still some to be found. Uh, a bunch of slot reds, though, are kind of inshore still. Um, you know, it's not uh, not all puppy puppy reds yet rat reds uh but uh sheep's head is kind of tailing off uh nobody's got fiddler crabs either as far as bait shops go uh it's been up and down kind of hit or miss there from everything i've heard sometimes they got fiddler crabs sometimes they don't but that's about the only thing that they're catching them on um trout bite has been great and reportedly yellow mouth's been good we'll find out tomorrow alex um, uh, i know you recently went out in the intercoastal uh, how'd you do? Mm -hmm. what, what do you got to report on that? Yeah, I recently went out to the uh, to the intercoastal near Volano or St. Augustine, um, <clears throat> and uh, we we didn't do too bad. We got some whiting, uh, trout, uh, I think black bass, stingray, but uh, it was a pretty slow bite. It was pretty cold. Wind was kicking, but uh, still caught fish. Still had a good time. Right, right. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully, me and Bubba can get out there and. Uh, the old bass tracker he's got and go fill up our freezer with some yellow mouth trout. That, that was kind of encouraging when I went to the Mayport uh, jetties and I got that one yellow mouth. I'm like, well, I managed to pick a random yellow mouth uh, here amongst the rocks that must have got lost. Uh, if you go to an actual yellow mouth hole, we ought to be able to tear them up. So be looking for that video. Uh, like I said, I got like three or four of them. I got to sit down and edit and try to get up. And so we're back, you know, this more outdoors. We're back and rolling. I had that hiatus where, I didn't put any videos up for a while, but we get, we got them rolling again now. Yeah, that's uh, right. I mean, if everything holds true, for what what we're what we've been you know getting as far as fishing reports go, the yellow mouth are supposedly in. Uh, Rusty B checking in the chat. What's up, Rusty? How's it going, man? Uh, asked if you ever use gulp crabs. Any of you guys ever use gulp crabs? I've never used them. Uh, always thought about it, but never used them though. No, I've never never used them. No, I didn't. I didn't get the chance to use them yet. Uh, I'm probably definitely going to do that. I actually saw some. Uh, I was at the local bait store here by my house, and I saw some hanging up, and I thought about getting them. But uh, yeah, I had so much other stuff in my hands that I needed that I just put that on the back burner. But uh, get out the house and go fish. His last video to give him a little shout out. Uh, he actually used some. Uh, he had the peeler crab, and then he had something called the cocoa crab. That one looked pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know that was even out there. He said he got it off of Amazon. So, a little shout out for get out the house, go fish, go over to his YouTube page, and you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've always uh, done that. Just seen them and never got them yet. But like, man, I'm gonna pick those up and try them one day. I never actually tried them though. I mean, if it works like any of the other golf stuff, it'll work. I don't see why not. Looks pretty good. Never tried it though. 
Well, what I want to try it for is is when the reds start coming back in the in the creeks, you know, in the salt mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. I would love to put one of those on a jig head, just crawl it on the bottom. I bet they could not resist that. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It was uh, you know, finding little little creek creek ledges, stuff like that, uh, or you know, some kind of inshore spots with some rocks or something, crawl them around then. Yeah, that definitely worked. Guys, if you're wondering why I'm just wearing a plain brown t shirt, because I just got off of work from my military job and uh I just took off the camo and sat down and started collaborating with these guys, seeing what we we're gonna talk about. And uh, see if anybody's been out this weekend. Bubba, he's been doing boat maintenance, same as me. He's finally uh, got the trailer fixed so we can get it down the road safely. We've been cursed. Yeah. 2018, yeah. 2018 cursed us with like car and like boat problems. Right now, 2019 is off to a way better start than last year. So let's hope 2019 is going to be the year of great things. I really hope so. Yep, yep. I had spent the last two days doing a leaf spring on my boat trailer. Uh, one of my leaf springs broke, you know, because they're old and 30 years old and about that time get dumped in salt water and brackish water all the time. But of course, that turned into all kinds of other stuff breaking while I'm tearing it apart. In a hunt I see, you, you, didn't, you didn't bubble rig anything, did you? No. <laughs> No, but it turned into, you know, chasing down the right size U-bolts and everything at, you know, three different places to find them and a little bit of spot welding. And, but no, it's all together. Chase going running down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, of course, you got to take one thing apart and everything else starts breaking. So that's how that went. And I did a couple other little things today, too. Like I was remounting some stuff that I just wanted to do better and, you know, stuff like that. So, so you say you were doing more? Is that what you're saying? Doing more in Jacksonville. Ah, so close. All right. Uh, cold weather it is amongst us, depending on what week you step outside. <laughs> so one day you're cold water fishing, and the next day you could probably even catch them on top water. It's nuts. But uh, for cold weather fishing, uh, I've actually had some people ask me, like, you know, cold weather for – different types of species what do you do uh for redfish uh if you you're going to get some they're going to be smaller they either go one of two places when the water gets really cold where they can't stand it either they go way the smaller ones that is go way back in the creek because there's less water volume which means it heats up quicker and plus that mud and all the moisture is hold heat so that's where they're going to be they're going to be way back in the creeks same thing fish something like a gulp shrimp or a live bait and just work it real slow they're not going to be running and chasing and real active like they are during the spring and summertime uh, as far as the bigger reds like bubba was saying when it gets real cold they run back out to the ocean because it's more stable there's not that up down up down out there in the ocean it's more stable temperature and that's what they want uh, as far as bass go usually this time of year bass if they can that is they get start migrating out of the creeks and basically the same thing as redfish. They go to the main lake or the main river, you know, the main body source or water source because it's more consistent. There's less fluctuation and they can go down deep where it's going to be holding uh, north. At water temp, uh, Nathan Hughes said water temp was 57 degrees this morning at Nassau Sound. Which wow. that's, that's getting kind of chilly for Florida fish in uh, salt water at that. Yep. Where, uh, uh, what were you getting over there in the lake the other day? As far as water temp goes? Lake, I was getting 55. It was 54 okay. in the morning and heated up to 55. That's, that's of course, surface temperature. Yeah. Um, usually, for bass, though, it's a little different. Now, when it starts getting below 55, that's when they really slow down, especially uh, Florida bass. Yeah, we, we'll get into that story a little bit more in detail. But uh, when we were throwing fast-moving baits, me, if you guys didn't know, me, Bubba, and Alex did our first uh, collaboration. We all went fishing together. And if you were moving, throwing fast-moving baits, they were hitting it, but they were more just kind of slapping at it. Yeah. They really didn't have the speed to attack it. So they were right there on the edge of being active versus just slow-moving. Uh, and a lot of times you have to throw kind of a reaction-style bait when it gets colder because they're not really going to be chased, but if something's right by their face and it triggers them, they'll hit it. So like a jerk bait. Jerk baits are awesome for wintertime. 
because especially a suspending one because you can leave it there in the strike zone for a little bit of time. Just a real slow cadence, just jerk, pause, jerk, pause, and you can do the same thing uh, for saltwater sea trout as well. The colder it gets, the longer you leave it soaking too. Right. Same thing with soft plastics. Uh, if you're using soft plastics, just crawl them on the bottom. And then a lot of times you can just dead stick them. Just don't move the line. Don't move anything. Go have a sandwich. You know, uh, yeah. And on, on that note, too, on soft plastics, especially like bass fishing, I like to switch to something um, that's got like a lot of appendages, kind of wiggly little stuff whenever you do have to like dead stick it, stuff that might move around in the water a little bit more on its own than something, say, that's a little bit, you know, like your – a lot of your kind of beaver style stuff that I'll pitch whenever it's warmer uh, doesn't have a lot of little, you know, it's got a couple big flappers to it. But I, I switched to something that's got like antenna looking stuff, stuff like that, whenever we're fishing real slow um, because it will, it'll move a little, just a little bit on its own and everything. Uh, but any of that kind of moving stuff, yeah, you gotta, you gotta kind of knock that out. Right. So, uh, Alex, you got anything to add to uh, cold water fish, like where your experiences have been? <clears throat> Uh, just, uh, I mean, this year so far, like you were saying, you know, they were kind of slapping at it. They weren't, they didn't want to commit. Like they saw it and it was more of just a reaction. They weren't actually going for it. Um, this time of year, I like, you know, like you were saying, suspending jerk baits, um, square bills, real slow retrieve, just enough to get their attention and hopefully get them to uh, bite down onto that. Right. Crank baits are, are a great choice, uh, for winter time. Something that, uh, most for bass, they they start to change over from, especially late winter, more more late winter. So when the water gets really cold, I'm talking about like in the 40s, uh, they start changing over from a bait fish diet to more forage, like in crawfish. Crawfish because they don't have to chase it down. Crawfish mm -hmm. are going to slow faster. down with them. Yeah. Therefore, like crawfish imitation baits or uh, crawfish like crank baits, like small crawfish crank baits, like a natural color like a greenish brown or depending on the moon phase, they'll get more of a red color on them like this one right here. And you want to reel that in so slow. You can feel that crankbait just hitting every slight little bump. I'm talking about just barely turning the, the handle on it. Um, and all of a sudden it'll just be real mushy when they grab it. It won't be a hard thump. It'll just be all of a sudden you just feel weight on it. On that note, too, talking about crankbaits when it's cold, I switched to something that's got a lot wider wobble to it because you can get that a lot slower going than something that's, you know, a little bit tighter wobble. Uh, you go for something with a wide wobble so you can play with kind of the different lips for something that's, you know, because you're you're moving a lot more side to side than you are forward. Right, kind of like a like a wiggle ward. It does what they call that hunting action. It, it, mm -hmm. it digs more and goes more more erratic. A lot of darting, yeah. Right, versus just something that's kind of hopping. Yep. Now, we say that whenever we all went fishing and, you know, together, if we were, of course, we go fishing anytime we go, uh, it's cold front. And it was, you know, whenever we got out there, we're all bundled up because it was 40 and one from Florida and everything. But the uh, first two fish I caught were on top water. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were shallow on top water uh, on a whopper plopper it was a pretty slow retrieve for whopper plopper but steady retrieve never paused it and got blown up on a couple times with it too uh but you know it's uh you never know <laughs> well i mean in that scenario the, the the bass are more uh bait fish oriented they they were still hunting for bait fish oh yeah oh yeah with the water temperature being around 55 and then getting up to like 56 uh, as the sun got up and the water is also moving. I don't know if we're ever going to see any colder water this year. We'll see how it goes because it keeps getting these little like mini springs going on where a week long where we get in the seventies and everything. So we'll we'll see if it ever dips down below where it's at. You know. Well, we'll we'll see because our coldest time of year is starting to come up. Usually, like uh, the beginning of February. Is yeah, yeah. When we get our coldest weather, like we get that two weeks of like thirty degree. 20 to sometimes 20s at night whether in uh look who decided to show pop up over there in the chat let's take a peek over there <laughs> i just saw that so uh, timmy has now decided to be a uh, spectator aisle 11 <laughs> tim aisle 11 that's where you gotta go <laughs> what, did, what did you tell him 
I told him to go to aisle eleven. He's oh, uh, he's aisle at, eleven. He's at grocery oh, yeah. shopping, guys. He's in Publix. <laughs> he's at Publix right now. <laughs> go get you a sub. Yeah, get you a pub sub. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and that's with with that that time of year coming up. I mean, it's you know everything does get slow then on uh, the freshwater end of it, and you know usually it's it's kind of like our downtime where you kind of pick weekends. Uh, instead of you know just kind of banging it out like we do the rest of the year um but you know it's the time of year they're getting fat too the uh when i caught my 11 pounder last year was freezing freaking cold yeah um, next next month we're definitely going to get back out there on the river mm-hmm. so it's the time of year when they're getting fat so i can catch my 11 my 12 pounder yep <laughs> they're getting there we uh yeah, I gotta we gotta you. get we got to get Alex a big one though. He's got to get yeah, double, you know, big up, big big one too. He's got a bet with uh, somebody for double digits. Your brother, right? Yeah, my older brother. Yeah, so I've got a running bet with my older brother who got me into fishing. That the first one of us to catch ten pounder, the other one owes him a steak dinner. There you go. It better be <laughs> a good a steak dinner. Kiss, it better be yeah. a roast Chris steak dinner. Yeah, it better be a good steak dinner. Timmy, uh, the link has been sent to you on Facebook Messenger. Just FYI, if you're still watching this and not picking up some cereal. <laughs> yeah, and then kind of on that too, like when I caught that 11 pounder, it was a slow day overall, though. We only caught and it was there. a cold front. It was, oh, it was cold as hell. It was in the 30s whenever we got out there. Uh, yeah. And then we went the next day, and you know, it was like we couldn't buy a bite. The, the few we caught, you had to hit them in the head with it. Uh, because it was so cold you know it was like that day after the cold front hit so it was really down then as far as water temp goes um uh, so you know it's kind of we'll, we'll see what what end of january february brings as far i'm hoping for a warm one this year right well then, we're definitely off to a better start weather wise than we were last year last year we had yeah. hurricanes we had ice storms i mean it was just ter- 2018 was terrible i hated 2018 <laughs> Uh, 2019, we got lucky. We didn't get any hurricanes. We, we really didn't hardly even get any tropical storms. And then uh, this, as, as I don't want to jinx this, but this winter has been kind of mild. And I mean, yeah. I was walking around yeah. in a t-shirt out there just a second ago, and we were in shorts on Christmas. I mean, I'm sitting outside right now. I'm on, I'm on the front porch. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Right, it's beautiful outside today. Uh, if you guys are out there, so 2019's weather. But then you get the typical Florida winters, where you'll get three or four days in the thirties and yeah. then it'll start kind of leveling out in the forties at night and then back to being hot again for like four days and then bam, cold front again. And I think this past weekend we got like back to back cold fronts. Almost. Yeah. So we'll, Hey, there's Timmy. What's up? Hey. Man? He wow. made it. Everybody welcome Timmy. Where's where, uh, with his Kool-Aid shirt. <laughs> he made it. Look at this. I bet you all would appreciate this shirt. Hold on a second. Yeah, there's yeah, a red yeah, on there. Yeah. Timmy's a big time red fisherman now. He's hooked on reds. Oh, yeah. Especially when they wrap around crab traps. It has a lot of excitement. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I would not have loved reds if it were not for uh, for Bubba that day. That was a great day. How was, was your. Uh, it was. How oh. was your watch today? There we go. Dude, it sucked. <laughs> How about your. <laughs> This is this is why it sucked, and and I didn't I don't know what you guys were talking about before this because I just hopped on, but um this is why it sucked. I'm sitting on watch here, and uh, a senior chief I see him posting pictures of reds that he's currently catching as I'm sitting there at the computer, and I go, "You got to be kidding, man!" He's like, "Yeah, how's your watch?" I'm like, "What a jerk!" <laughs> just yeah. rubbing it in. It's so fun when you're working and uh, somebody else is out there catching them. Hopefully that'll be me and Bubba tomorrow since we're playing hooky. That's right. Well, y'all two have fun at work, and me and Bubba will be sharing all the pictures. Yeah. Oh. That'll be fun. <laughs> what am I miss, guys? What's going on here? What are we talking about? What's the topic? Uh, we basically went over like uh, our weather that we're having right now, how it's getting cold and then warm and then cold and then warm, and then uh, like the types of baits to use during the cold water times. Definitely a lot smaller baits, a lot more finesse fishing, especially when it comes to uh, – colder weather that's at least what i found out uh the smaller you go and it also depends on the forage and the area that you're in too like for yeah. example though like when uh bubba and i went fishing at that pond i don't know if you guys went or not but when we went yep. fishing at that pond those giant shad they were just huge and it yeah. was 
cold was it, Bubba? Alex, yeah, I don't. Alex, I don't know nothing about those giant shad, do I? No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Joe caught him. He, I, would you catch two of them? He foul two hooked of them. two of them. Yeah, and, and Timmy, when we were out there, he foul hooked one that was like a freaking pound oh, huge shad. Yeah. It so is. we, uh, you know, so it's kind of it, it's there. It's whatever the natural forage is too. Yeah, but yeah, you got to slow it down on that as well. Um, oh yeah. But while we got you, Timmy, you've done some uh, some traveling and fishing recently, haven't you? I have, yeah. I just got back from Kentucky over the holiday leave. Caught my first muskie. Mm. Uh, oh, I saw that. That was awesome, man. I'm super jealous. Yeah, yeah. we, we got to get Ugly Pike on to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he would make fun of your little muskie. <laughs> the whole goal was, while I was up there, hey, you shut your mouth, little dog. Um my whole goal up there was to catch a smallmouth or a spot, and I didn't catch either one of them, but I ended up with a muskie. But you got a muskie. Yeah, I would take that. I think I would take that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was a, it was a lot of fun, a lot colder up there than it is down here. Uh, I did kind of miss Florida a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you need to play another red trip. You, you got me on that uh that red high right now. I'm, I'm dying to uh, get on a red. Alex, we need to go fishing, man. I know, I know. I went fishing with the other two, but that's what they were just saying earlier. Is uh, we gotta we gotta all somehow figure out how to coordinate. We all gotta go out together. Yeah, yeah. we want to get the uh, the foursome going two on two, two boats, two on two here. You, the the young versus old. Uh, yeah, you, you two young guys on one boat versus and, the old parts. Yep, and, and versus us two, and uh, get all four of us going. That'd be pretty cool. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, because hopefully by then I'll have the big aquarium set up, and we gotta be able to catch a swanee to put in it. Well, first, we need to catch decent swannies. Joe, you're the only one that's caught a decent-sized swanny. I am the swanny champ. Has it hey, right I, now. Hey, I had no. I had the, uh, the legal the trophy right. big catch one, but that it is was last did. tournament. How many did you end up with? That <clears throat> doesn't count there. I caught the uh, the yes, only it does. the only mudfish in the Santa Fe River. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Crystal clear, millions of gallons of water, spring fed dumping in there a day, and I find a mudfish in it. And yeah, a how, big many, how many how many big fish did we see? Yeah, we <clears throat> we saw so many big fish out there. If you guys are in Florida and you're watching this, if you've never been on the Santa Fe River, go check it out. It is really cool, and it's not like a lot of the other stuff that we get to fish in Florida. Uh, oh, because this is old Florida. Yeah, it's old Florida all up and down it. It's got steep shoals where, you know, the fast moving rivers is carved into that. Um, and it's, you know, you get a chance to catch swannies. There's decent largemouth on there that we saw a ton of. But of course, you know, it's cold front while we all went. So nothing, everything was kind of looking at our bait and then going the other way. But it's really cool because if you ever want to see what your bait looks like in the water, it's all, you know, super clear, good, high visibility. It's just a lot different fishing experience than what we, you know, the rest of Florida that we get, <laughs> you know. The chocolate milk the rest of us are fishing in. Right. That's the coffee grounds. Yeah. Uh, that was horrible. I tried to go to Goodby's the other day, and it was just horrible. It was low as can be brown as can be i, I, would, I don't ever want to go there again <laughs> <laughs> rain's got everything kind of mucked up right now but you know it'll clear back up yeah and then it's this this is the wrong time of year for a lot of that kind of creek stuff like over there too they're starting moving out whenever it starts dipping down they'll be getting back into the uh, main river now yeah. Yeah. and that's actually what i've been trying to do actually i've been talking to you guys about that trying to fish a little bit deeper and um I don't know. I need to find some deeper spots. It's a bunch of riding around looking at electronics, uh, you know, finding shell bars, looking at different, you know, steep different changes in contour, uh, you know, plotting stuff out before you leave the house almost and kind of running around looking at your electronics. Thankfully, right. uh, that's, gas that's, is that's, deep. That's, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's a good tip, though. Uh, talking about this time of year, looking for deep holes and everything for winter or shell bars for the river in that case. If you can. If you have an Apple or iPhone or any kind of smartphone, I'm, I'm not sure if it's on computer. I'd imagine it's on computer. Get the Navionics app. It's like $14.99 for worth America it. and Canada, but it's worth every penny. It's, mm -hmm. it's so worth every penny. Uh, it's Like I said, $14.99, it shows you all the contours, and Timmy was showing me how you can color coordinate different depths so it kind of eliminates. You're not just looking at all light blue and dark blue. It kind of breaks it up better and makes things stand out better. Mm -hmm. So you can pick stuff out. 
There you yep. go. You can say something to me so that'll pop up on the big right, screen. So here, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and show you this. So I have mine set to this where the, the more pink it is, the more shallow it is. And the more blue it is, the actual deeper it is. But you can see this depression happening right here within. Uh, I don't think you guys can really see it very well. But it's like a weatherman. He's like yeah. a weatherman. <laughs> Pretty much. But, yeah, so it, you can color code contour lines. And I thought that was incredible. I've been watching this uh, guy that's a uh, FLW pro. And this is how he does. And he does like this Navionics seminar on YouTube. And uh, I actually watched the whole hour and a half on it. And it shows a lot. So $14. I think it's a one-time fee a month. And uh, it, it's, it's incredible, guys. And you can do it all over the United States. And they also have other apps by Navionics that you can do outside the U.S. too if, you, uh, if you're planning on traveling outside of the country. Yeah, it's very cool. I got a uh, like an iTunes uh gift card and i was like well, what am i gonna use this for because i only i've got two phones my work phone's an iphone and i only use it for work calls so i'm like what am i gonna use this for and i grabbed the navionics app with it and was very surprised at how awesome it was it's like i want to go buy it on the android now because <laughs> you use it on my other phone uh but it, it is it was well worth the the 15 bucks for that for sure well, well I'll take yeah. word for it. I got to download it right now. <laughs> it, it, it's it's very cool as far as like because I'm I'm you know everybody knows that I'm kind of like the cheapest one out of all of us, the most frugal. Um, you know, so if it's free and it's out there, I've tried it. Uh, I'll be there soon. <laughs> the, the most efficient. You're not the you're not the cheapest. Right. You're the most efficient. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and a lot of them, like, you can find a lot of stuff that's in the Navionics app in other apps, but it's kind of like this app has this, this app has that, and that one's pr got pretty much all of them together. Um, you know, so it's, type of thing. Right, exactly. It kind of, instead of having to bounce back and forth between stuff, like, typically I'll carry, you know, my, my Android phone with me with all the free ones, and I'll leave it up on the console while I'm driving around, and... I'll have like three different fishing apps pulled up while I'm doing it. And like one's like my one I use for chart plotting. It's got depth charts on it and shows contour lines, but it's not as good, you know, but it, it works really well with the GPS kind of integration to it. And I've got another one that does like the chart plot or I mean the uh, contour lines a little bit better, but then, you know, after trying the Navionic <laughs> one, it's, it's hard to go back to, to those. Uh, and it's got, you know, it, it gets regular updates from people out there and stuff like that too. So it's, I, I like that one as far as apps goes. It's probably one of the better ones. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I know a lot of us are working on our boats right now. It's definitely a time of the year to start doing boat maintenance right before you know pre-spawn and the spring season gets here. This is a great time to do it. You know, if you're in your shop. It's bad weather outside. At least you can you know still kind of get your get your fix by sitting in your boat and just thinking of all the good stuff you want to do to it to improve it. Yeah. So, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is too funny. Remember the senior chief I was telling you guys about? Right. Nathan Hughes. Water tip was 57 this morning. That's all sound. That's him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Timmy, you're doing. Right now. <laughs> Timmy, you're doing a you're doing a great job of uh, spreading the word of Dismore Outdoors. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, at least you didn't say anything bad about him. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Good yeah. thing. Who? Ooh, good thing. Now, does anyone here know Theo Vaughn? I don't uh, know. I'm trying to find that Neo Vaughn thing right now. Uh, yeah, I think I think we got. I think we're getting trolled. <laughs> Either that or somebody's watching the wrong thing. Theo Vaughn is a comedian. Um, <laughs> Bubber, Bubber, you, you do. Is that your stage name on uh, Friday nights? We don't know about. No, if any of us look like him, and Alex looks more like him than anybody else, but oh come on, I don't look anything like him. <laughs> I have no idea who that. I don't even know who that is. So I guess right, I'm not a stand-up stand comedian. But All thanks right. for thanks for giving us a view anyway, sir. Yeah, thanks, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, it. Like back to the subject, we're talking about boat upgrades and everything. Uh, like I'm working on my boat. Uh, Timmy's doing wanting to do some improvements to his, and Lord knows Bubba's working on his circa 36 bass tracker. Works. Uh, I think that the, the the brand new tradition bass trackers they got for sale for ten thousand dollars are based off of Bubba's original model. It is. They look almost exactly the same. Right. And uh, but anyway, for mine, I just got. I have a two thousand one Skeeter. For those of you that that watch my videos, and you know you can't put lipstick on a pig. You know, there's a lot of videos out there. These guys talking about oh buying my first bass boat, and they go out and 
take out a second mortgage on a bass boat for like $67,000. Like, guys, you don't need to spend that much on a first bass boat. I paid $6,000 for mine. Um, does it have all the bells and whistles and great? No, I mean, but it gets me out there on the water and there's Bubba can vouch. There's been a lot of big fish called out of the back of a $6,000 bass, you know, my $6,000 bass boat. Mm -hmm. I've had one, two, three, four. There's four people in the past four years that I've owned that boat all have caught their personal best. Like I said, three of them out of the back of the boat. Uh, Bubba got an 11 pounder. Chris got an eight pounder. My dad got a nine and a half pounder. So Tim and Alex need to get in the back of that boat so we can get them, yeah. uh, get the, their next one. Yeah. Um, but so, but you, like I said, you can make upgrades It's a 2001, but who's to say you can't bring it into the 21st century. Right. So, uh, things that I'm doing, uh, you guys, if you see my hummingbird video or replace the transducer, I got brand new seats. I'm, I'm not sponsored by BassBoatSeats.com by any means necessary, but they were awesome seats. And it was cheaper for me to just buy whole new seats from them than to take my seats out and get them reupholstered. So, and I got what I wanted. I did. I got tired of having middle, a middle seat that Bubba kept stepping on. So I just ended up getting a step with a console in it. So we can just be done with that finally. Um, like it's my fault that you didn't have a step. Yeah, right. It's your, it's your <laughs> it's like a, fall at the factory. Yeah. Um, oh, next up, uh, like other upgrades I'm gonna be adding. I'll be doing a video about it too. So I, uh, it's probably Saturday or third. Uh, dang, I can't talk. Tuesday, I'm gonna be adding uh, deck lighting LEDs. I got green LEDs. I'm gonna add like all around the deck of the boat. So for night fishing, you see what the crap you're grabbing, not tripping over stuff. And also, I'll put lights inside the rod locker so I can see you can see what rod you're grabbing. Uh, just you know, different things like that. I got new, uh, new pedestal seat cleaning with shampoo. I mean, she's gonna be rocking when I get done. I uh, took all the old decals off the of, off of Timmy. Not this, not this Timmy on Bait Shop Talk. I'm talking about the Timmy on the back. We finally got going. Took all the old decals off. Gonna buff it out. She's gonna be looking sweet for the 2019 tournament season. And I hope we get I get to venture out into uh, doing some more tournaments this year. I know we keep talking about it uh, all last year. We, you know, it's one of these long list of stuff that me and Joe got that we keep saying we need to do. We need to hit that Whitey's tournament zone this year. Right, we need to hit Whitey's tournament some more, and we, we're marking off the elephant tr or the yellowmouth trout trip. Finally, finally. Getting, that, finally, finally getting, getting that, getting that out, out of the way. I've been talking about it for like a year and a half. We're finally well, getting that done. April should be that bassing for babies tournament again, and we need to get redemption on that. We did. We yeah, like actually getting to fish. Yeah, we're going to go out there and hunt down some shell bars. When's this Whitey's tournament? Who knows? Alex, let's, let's join them. Let's do this. <clears throat> Thursdays. It's called the Working Man's Tournament. It's every Thursday. Let's do it. Yeah, that's that's definitely a plan to to hit that more this year than we were talking about it all, you know, all last year pretty much and never really got to to do it, but definitely plan on doing that this year. Yeah, Working Men's Tournament is is awesome to uh kind of get your feet wet. In a tournament fishing, I mean, tournament fishing to me is just bass fishing is fun. It is, but when you add competition, like where every pound counts, like oh my god, uh, wh why did you drop that? Why didn't you get the net? What happened? Why did you retie? You know, it's like every fish is that much more important. It doesn't matter if they're a half a pound or God help us, if Bubba caught the eleven pounder on tournament day. I mean, holy <laughs> crap! Woohoo! Boy, we've been That's going right there. Yeah, every we. Well, this would actually be my first year as a uh, a pro actually if i were to you know do this because i've always been fished as a co-angler so it'd be pretty cool to actually finally fish as a pro this year right uh so what uh, what upgrades you are you trying to do for your uh bass tracker tim see that's not, like see tim's got a bass tracker that's perfectly fine for yeah. a first boat later on he'll i'm sure he'll upgrade so uh the number one thing that i really want to do is get the seats taken care of and then there's all these little things that I really want to do is like switch out the electronics. It's my grandpa's boat that uh, he's let me use forever. Wow. And uh, so I definitely need to update the electronics. But the other thing that I noticed, and I actually, because I was so bored on watch today, is there's a, a tiny micro power pole you can put on the back of the tracker or your kayak. So I want to do that. And you can also do, it's a, I think it's like $100. And it's a hydro wave and it's battery powered. Oh God, get out of here. <laughs> You're watching too much YouTube at work, too. Oh man, YouTube's yeah. the devil, bro. It'll make you spend all kinds of money. So, make bait fish sounds. Yeah. Get you out got of here. the hydro wave, power pole, and 
definitely update the electronics and the course of seats. That's uh, pretty much what I'm going to do. All right, we'll do the hydrowave last. All right, electronics and seats <laughs> right towards the top of the list. Seats definitely at the top of the list. But no, that uh, that little micro power pole, that yeah. would be, that'd be sweet. That would, yeah. be a, that would be a sweet upgrade on there. Yeah, that would be um, good. Bubba, for your boat, man, we just need to spend a winter one time and just tear yours all the way down to the hull. And then sell it and get a different one. No, no, we're not going to sell it. We're just going to tear it all the way down, make it a project boat, and like build it up. That'd be a great freaking like YouTube series. Yeah, you have to start over from scratch. Rip it right, down. new carpet, fiberglass right. repair, that kind of stuff. And maybe we can get you a, a micro, uh, micro power pole. Yeah, I want to strip it all the way down and, and start over pretty much. I want to make a new console and everything from scratch and kind of go from there. All right, sounds like uh, little Bubba's making his appearance. Yeah. <sighs> Not happy. Is he walking around with a hammer again? This is, oh, no, God. this is the other one, and this is why I have a, I have a hard time putting like myself above these jokers anytime and uh, and and spending any money. It's not that I don't you know make enough to go buy a different boat or something like that, but I just have a hard time justifying it whenever it's like I can dump that. The mad little kid over here. I gotta get I gotta get myself a boat or a truck and then a boat, I suppose. Well, like you were talking about, you don't want to get rid of your car. Yeah, uh, you gotta keep your car. You can go on Craigslist and get like a beater Ford Ranger, a beater S10, and then get a small bass tracker or something to hook up behind it, or even like a, a saltwater skiff. Yeah, well, I don't know, need the, the old school tiller outboard. I mean, yep. it'll get you, it'll get you where you need to go. So, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. You, you, you we can trick that thing out too, man. I'm like, I'm willing to come over and help you guys anytime you need it. I, I've been looking at those little. Oh God, I'm so glad I bought this damn truck. It makes holding a kayak so much easier. Yeah. Uh, see, I told you, Alex. He's still rocking the roof mount. I look, I mean, look, I my my pool noodles roof mount. Uh if you guys haven't seen it, it's pretty funny. I take pool noodles, put them on top of my uh VW Passat, and then I put my kayak on top of that. Yeah. Works great. And um, it keeps the traffic far and, behind you. Yeah, I was about to say, and it keeps a wide berth behind me. Nobody wants to go behind me. But I, I mean, I've been looking. I can get a small like uh, I've done the weight and I've done like the, you know, the distribution and all that, and seen how much I can haul. I, I could get a small John boat and haul that with a trailer. Um, thankfully, my car is a diesel, so I can haul you know four thousand pounds. So nice. I've been looking at that. Yeah, if you got a four thousand pound John boat, by God, we we need to have another <laughs> conversation. Serious John um, boat. But no, like that that uh that. The tradition, sorry, I got to rearrange, get a little bit more comfortable here. Uh, what they call the tradition uh, bass tracker, the new boat that came out, is ten thousand dollars. Like it's like nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars out the door. Brand new, yeah. Brand uh, new. Which is crazy. Like, I think I think like so a forty tempting. horse on the back. Uh, yeah, I think it's a forty, and it was so tempting for me when those first came out. I'm like, man, that is so cheap. <laughs> I saw uh, Roland Martin actually did a video. He actually yeah. updated that. 40 anniversary tracker he put like a hydraulic jack plate actually that micro power pole also and updated his electronics and that you can do a lot with a tracker it, it's freaking awesome so any of you guys that don't have a boat yet but are looking to get in a boat a tracker is a way to go especially aluminum boat at, down here in florida i mean you can use it in the salt water you can use it in fresh water I mean, right you, you ain't gotta rush out there and go get a seventy thousand dollar uh legend bass boat right off the bat yeah. right yeah, and well, talking about catching fish on, like, you know, uh, fish don't know what you're sitting in. Like, there's been plenty, plenty of good fish caught out of that old 35 year old bass tracker over there too. Timmy can tell you about that. Yeah, All we right. had a great day. I think it was the first day him and I ever went fishing. And how many pounds do you think we had that day, Bubba? Uh, well, I think we were we were not counting culls and everything. Um, like, I think the five best between the two of us was like a 20 pound bag. And then like the next time we went, you had like a 15 pound bag. I had like a 13 pound bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, there's, there's plenty of fish caught of that old beater too. Oh yeah. Well, look, the, the night's getting away from us. Man, I think we gone over up boats and anybody's watching that has a lot of money, you know, want to make a little wish list for us. Right. Yeah. You'll be more than happy to do that, and we can share some <laughs> some contact information. But anyway, uh, let's uh, big big split, big split. Uh, like I said, we 2018. Like I said, a lot of good things coming up. Big shakeup 2019. The profession, uh, professional bass fishing world. Do you guys know that usually be the big two, uh, FLW and you know Bassmaster Elite Series. 
well now mlf has came on the scene with mlf bass pro uh tour and pretty much snatched up all the big names from the other two organizations and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of uh grief over it too like i listened to a podcast called uh bass talk live and those guys really go in depth in you know the tournament organizations and they're talking about this it's even ended some friendships over this that's how serious this is i'm sure yeah and mlf is shaking it up because this is like the first tournament series where there is no entry fees for the professionals that are fishing which makes sense because think about this think about uh if the jaguars each member of the jaguars had to pay money to play football to have a chance not even saying that that not a not knowing they're going to get paid but a chance to get paid yeah and you know why should it be any different with professional bass anglers especially mlf because it's more entertainment than anything else. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I mean, for, what, what's your guys' thoughts on that? For the longest time, you know, they could they could get away before this happened. They could get away with that entry fee thing because of standard bass tournament format. You know, you pay in into the pot that gets paid out. But for forever, you know, for years and years and years, they've long since made the money that back that they're paying out to the anglers through advertising revenue, TV deals, stuff like that, you know, so that was just pretty much taking money off the top from the anglers that you didn't have to. I think the big loser in this is going to be, is going to be Bass, uh, the Elite Series. I think FLW has a kind of their niche with, you know, the different style of coverage kind of thing. They didn't have all the biggest names before. Um, they had their, you know, kind of few big names, guys like Scott Martin that stayed on, but the yeah, way they Scott Canterbury. Their- yeah, and the, the way that they do their coverage, I think, is going to – it appeals probably to a younger crowd a little bit better. And I like the way they do the uncut kind of coverage. Like, if they've got, like, the, you know, the internet signal or the cell phone signal to do it, they'll they'll just roll for, you know, 20 minutes straight on a guy's boat. And I always like sitting there watching that because you can kind of see what he's doing, cast after cast after cast, instead of just cutting from fish to fish to fish. But I think the Elite Series is one that's going to – they're going to be the big losers in this. Absolutely. Right. Well, there's there's a lot of new rules that have came from this. Like uh, one of the FLW's new rules too is now it is required that you have some kind of action camera on your boat facing the angler towards the front of the boat, and it has to be running the whole time that uh, you're fishing. It it can't be shut off because that way, it, two reasons. One, they can use it for course for entertainment. You know, if like say they can't have a cameraman everywhere. There's some places that don't have signal and things like that, so they can't go live. So they can catch uh, action that's not on there. And two, it eliminates cheating. I think that's the biggest thing. Then they can tell if a bass was snagged or he was hooked, you know, uh, in in the mouth, you know, properly. Hook him in the mouth. Hook him in. Where's he at? God, we got to get him on here one night. We need to get Charles Kramer. Hook him in the mouth. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He is a, a local YouTube celebrity down in St. Augustine. He's he's taken off quite a bit. Him and CC Corey like to pair up a lot. And uh, man, I'd love to get him on the show one night. If you, Charles, if you're watching this, man, hit me up on YouTube. Let's get you on here. I'd love to have you. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked again. Um, Bassmasters, they're they're also coming out with some new rules. The entry fees are a little bit less now because they're trying to make it a little bit more appealing. But the good thing is, like you said, Bassmasters is kind of taking a hit on this. The good news is, with all those guys leaving. That's a lot of empty spots for other people to move up. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, yeah, a new new face on the scene is a new opportunity for you know that many more spots for for other guys to get on there. Where if you don't have a name, you know that you can't just can't right. Crack I mean, out. we could see Alex up there like at the classic with the confetti falling around him for all we know. Yeah, with my ten foot kayak because that's the only boat that I have. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to be the only person in the kayak division. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Now that I think about it, you're right about as far as Bassmaster is actually taking a big hit. But now, because of this whole BPS or BP, yeah. um, Bassmaster is allowing the FLW pros to go over without needing to qualify. So, if, if Bass and FLW wanted to compete yeah. for you know against MLF to make it. They should make the tournaments where they're completely opposite schedules. That way, you could have pros go back and forth. Yeah. Like when one season's over for Bassmasters Elite, the pros could go over and fish FLW tournaments to try to win the cup over there, and vice versa. 
that would be the best thing, but they will not sit down and talk to each other. That's what's, that, that's what's killing them. And bro, you got to get with the times or you're going to fall to the wayside. And, and that's, that's what the viewers want. The viewers want to see that. So if you're not going to listen to what the viewers want and MLF is, and that's why they're taking off. That's why they have way higher ratings. And plus it's like what Bubba said, you're not just seeing snippets and highlights. You're seeing them like what they're using to get those fish. Like, and seeing what they're thinking too at the same time, like, oh well, I bet Gerald Swindle's throwing this, and then they cut over to Gerald Swindle, and he's not doing that at all. And also another thing uh, that I heard, uh, the MLF is going to, this is going to be about three years, three or five years down the road, depending on how well this takes off. They're going to be opening up what would be like, you know, like AAA kind of deal. It'd be like a, a place for them to kind of pull from. And draft new people as other folks like you know Kevin Van Dam. He's probably going to be retiring for too long, and you know other people will be starting to retire. So it gives them a pool to pull from for new talent. Like right now, the elites are using the college anglers and stuff. Yeah. Well, they need it. They need something too. I'm sure they can pull from college anglers as well. But they're going to start making a triple A, which is great. That's great because then you're getting back to grassroots fishing. That's the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. it used to be you had uh, bass local bass clubs, and those guys would, who won that would go on to fish the regionals and uh on up you know the state championships and on up on up the ranks and they got rid of that which is ridiculous i mean a lot of your the very best bass thing would have started out that way this well, pro tour though thing like i think it's honestly gonna be awesome because it's different it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier when it comes to having an old tracker and by adding all these upgrades i mean it's kind of the same thing they're upgrading this whole bass tournament world that we're all used to and I think that's kind of why a lot of these people are wanting to move over because maybe they want something different. Timmy yeah. dropping the analogy over here. Yeah, it's coverage. You know, <laughs> me, me, media coverage in general is is definitely changed. Where everything is is like a now, 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 now kind of thing. Um, you know, whether it's you know TV, internet, anything like that, it's got to be now. We're in that Twitter age where you know Twitter reports news before the news does, and the way that they're going to have to cover anything. You know, going from news to any kind of social stuff or bass tournaments, sporting events, everything is now. And you know, bass really hadn't the lead series hadn't hadn't done that. They haven't made it. They've kept the status quo as it is forever because they didn't have any competition to make them change. So they're either going to have to change now or. you know, fall back. Oh, okay. Right. And I really hate to see that because, you know, all the professional bass fishing all started with Ray Scott and the bass masters. I mean, back in the day when they all had matching Ranger boats and they had a shotgun start where they'd line up, shoot a 12 gauge in there. Can you imagine if we did that now in 2019? Like, all right, boys, get ready. Boom. Oh, no, you had too many people screaming at him like, Oh, I don't like guns. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I just know. It, I can imagine the wake that would cause because me and Bubba, uh, Bubba finally got to experience what's like to be an angler fishing tournaments in a 150 because we were the third <laughs> boat out and we were probably boat number 25 getting to the spot because I got, I had the skeeter wide open and here's all the guys with the 250s doing 70, just brown, brown, hi, bye, and going right past me. Yep, so yeah, yeah. That's the main reason I want to upgrade my boat is to have a 250 outboard so I can at least stay on par with everybody else as far as, you know, getting somewhere and fuel mileage and range. Uh, so that's where I'm at. Like, but yeah, a lot of good points on the, uh, the new shakeup with everything's uh, splitting. Um, something we didn't bring up is. Uh, me and Bubba went and fished the uh, Eagle Lake, which is out just north of Lake City, Florida. They're old reclaimed phosphate pits. And uh, if you guys, I'm sure some folks that are into freshwater fishing have ever heard of Beanville Plantation. It's like a uh, bass fishing resort, basically. There's cabins you go over there and rent, and they have they manage the lakes really well, and they're really fertile and known for giant bass. As a matter of fact, last week they caught a 15 pound bass out of a kayak. Ooh. They had, they had a they had a KB or the kayak bass fishing uh, championship there, and they caught a fifteen pound bass out of them. Good oh fishing a fifteen pound bass out of a kayak. Mm -hmm. But they have uh, the same kind of lakes that are managed by FWC called Lang Lake, Eagle Lake, and Alligator Lake. 
which is the same thing. They're they're reclaimed uh, phosphate pits or strip mining pits, and it, the the water is beautiful. It has grass. It has hydrilla. It has it's a bass fisherman's paradise. It has cattails, lily pads, cypress trees, laydowns, hydrilla, eelgrass. I mean, I could go on and on. It's just that in typical Joe and Bubba fashion, we went on a full moon, the day of a cold front. Yep. And, and we were not fishing for bass. We were fishing <clears throat> for uh, stripers or wipers or hybrids, hybrid stripers, stripers whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call them, depending on where you're from. We were trying to get our first hybrid striper, and I wanted some fish tacos, something bad. But uh, And we couldn't even catch a largemouth by accident. But we are definitely going to go back there, especially in the spring. I cannot wait. That place looks just awesome. So and uh, we call it a a slab of a crappie, though. Right. If you guys are on my Instagram and Facebook, you can see that I've caught probably the big. That was probably the biggest speckled perch or speck or crappie, whatever you want to call them. And I've caught in a long time. It was it was huge. It's it probably about uh, what. 14 15 inch crappie yeah it was it was a slab uh yeah trolling a crankbait <laughs> yeah yeah and you know that's uh other than that i could tell you what that that lake has a lot of is shad because there's no video on it because we sat there cast netting for shad about half the day yeah we probably could, <laughs> we probably, we probably could have made that the video yeah uh, i figure what i brought the cast net because i knew there was shad in there and i wanted to add some to the pond for my bass to fatten up and lord did we find shad uh the first cast net throw came back with a gar in the net believe it or not I'm, i've been on a gar streak here lately it seems like yeah. just thought about that but yeah. they have two different types of shad in that like they have gizzard shad which is the ones that grow really big like the ones timmy and i hooked at the uh at the secret pond in the middle of jacksonville and they have thread fin the typical little thread fin shad that bass like to eat up like m&ms and that's mostly what i was after and uh sadly only about I don't know, about a dozen or two made it, but the bass were thankful because as soon as I put them in there, there's about three or four of them that gobbled up immediately. Uh, so that turned into fishing for wipers to throwing our shoulders out uh, for shad with a cast net. Did you get your phone stolen again, Timmy? Is he taking selfies? No, I'm actually needing to refill my old fashioned. Oh, got to drink something fancy. Uh huh. I'm drinking lemonade out of a Jaguar cup. <laughs> I'm drinking water. <laughs> it's got ice in it, but no alcohol. It's a uh, yeah, some, some oh, cool. it's deep. They're deep. They're super deep. They're anywhere like the deepest yeah, range is like say. twenty, about twenty-two to twenty-five feet. And if you throw in a cast net in twenty-two feet of water, <laughs> well, that would have been good footage itself to see me and my shoulder in the water. So I made sure the net got all the way to the bottom. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Is they're really cool. Uh, like Joe was talking about, it's got everything in it, but it's got a bunch of really deep spots. Uh, and yeah, we were out there, yeah, throwing the cast net and then having to hang over the side of the boat, dip our hands in the water to try to let it hit bottom. And in some spots, we couldn't hit you know bottom with it because it's thirty foot deep. Rope just wasn't long enough. But I would definitely, yeah, definitely want to go back. Uh, you know, like everything. You'd, cold front full moon we'll see i mean now i'm sure the next time we go it'll be a cold front full moon too every day <laughs> i think i don't know i think it's supposed to get like i said it's getting down in the 40s uh, uh but i don't think it's gonna get that cold tonight for when we go out fishing tomorrow well maybe maybe us saltwater i think it's the first time we've ever been saltwater fishing together maybe us saltwater fishing together will change the the trend there I, I hope we can i hope we can okay so like i was saying uh earlier in the show there me Bubba and Alex did our first collaboration fishing. We all went kayak bass fishing and we all went to Bubba's secret lake. And it was the first time that me and Bubba got to meet Alex in person. We all watched yeah. his videos. We had him on the uh, bait shop talk before and he's, he's a great guy. What can I say? He, like he's, he's good. I, he even did some live coverage out there on the Facebook. Yep. So go to Do it live. Fish. yeah, he's doing it live. Go to uh, 904 Fishing on Facebook. Go ahead and click on there. He does live videos all the time. And he was lucky enough he caught two fish while he was actually filming live. So he yeah. got real lucky on that. Um, so, uh, Alice, what, go ahead and like tell us about your first time like fishing with us and collaborating and you know how your experiences of that day. Uh, I mean, it was it was nice going out with you guys because um, despite the fact that I've lived in Jacksonville going on 15 years now, I love finding new spots in Jacksonville that I don't know about. Um, you guys really treated me taking me this to this spot and, um, but, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we, we had a lot of laughs. I hit the side of my boat so hard, like 
first thing into the trip, I hit the side of my boat so hard that I actually shattered one of my crankbaits. Um, and, <laughs> and, um, uh, Joe was making fun of me, but then probably not 20 minutes later, I know he hit one of his rods and, <laughs> and bird nested is real so bad. I think, didn't you say you had to change it out there? Yeah, or... I, I went through it the first time and it took like, it felt like 20, 30 minutes to do it. And then, uh, like I said, okay, I'm not going to crack any more jokes because karma is after me right now. Mm -hmm. And I got to start getting a little cocky again. And then, wham, I did it again. I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I just took the reel off, took another reel <laughs> off, and swapped it out so I can just use that same action rod. Um, but as my first time there, and to catch a bass like on the probably fourth cast and get a bite on the first cast, I mean, I can't wait to go back in there when it's not when it's not going to be a, uh, I was about to say, especially front, con front, considering right. the weather. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, oh, yeah. sorry. It wasn't better fishing guys. I thought it was going to be all right. We started out all of us catching fish early. Hey uh, man, real, yeah. it was good yeah. fishing. Oh, yeah. I mean, no one got skunked. We all yeah, caught a couple true. of them. They were quality fish. That's he true. got a two, four. I got a two pounder. Yep. You got one that was probably close to two pounds. I know there's bigger ones in there cause Timmy's caught them. I've seen the video evidence of it. Yeah. yeah, I caught some of the biggest Florida gar I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, they got on the rattle trap, no less. Yeah. And I, I swear they was going to sink the kayak. They charged it like a torpedo. Yeah, and then gar, uh, we could have filleted some gizzard shad on the side of the bank. Yeah, and had a shore lunch. They were so big. Interesting like, little spot. I mean, it's got it's got mullet, it's got shad, and it's got you know regular like threadfin. It's got big gizzard shad. It's got gar, a uh, few bowfin, and big bass. It's got real big bass in it. Um, I mean, I've caught a bunch of five plus out of there, and Timmy pulled a twenty pound bag out of there. We'd um, love to tell you where this place is, guys. But I'm mm -mm. sorry, we got to at least keep one. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> Mom's the word. I tell you what, if you watch the video and you can guess where it's at, then by all means. But don't, say it. It. Yeah, but, don't, but don't say it. Yeah, but don't say it. Don't say it. Don't yeah. say it. If you yeah. really want to find a place to fish, there's a place in Julington Creek, and there's this guy's dock. I hope one of you guys flips it. I think it was like uh, Pete. I think he Creek. also has another house on George's Lake. Right. That guy got us too. <laughs> Yeah, it's about we're 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 referencing uh, angry dock owners, guys. Uh, right, people that think they own the water under the dock. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure if you guys have been fishing, you've came across, especially on the St. Johns River, you've oh, came yeah. across it at least once in your fishing life. Yeah. Well, it's not, yeah. not about he owns the water or anything. He just really wanted nothing to ruin his rotten, disgusting, moldy dock. Yeah, I think it was like growing algae all over it and falling apart. You're like, oh, don't fish next to that dock. Like came out with his coffee railing out the back door at us. Like his great great grandfather made that dock, and he wants to keep it pristine the way he made it. Eight hundred. Well, ago. you know what? You know what? Uh, I'm a I'm a veteran with hearing loss, so <laughs> I just wave. Hi, nice to see well, you too. I'm in the military too. Is it hearing loss or is it selective hearing? Uh, I'm gonna go yeah. hearing loss in my case. I just ignore him. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> you got Benny B over there in the chat. I just want to acknowledge him. He's been real helpful. He's been uh, giving us reports and what he's been doing. And I'm I'm very thankful to have him as a subscriber. And yeah, I do a lot of freshwater fishing. Uh, 2016 was my year of my saltwater uh, life. And then Bubba came along and I finally found a serious bass fishing partner and joined a bass club. And it kind of the YouTube channel went downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, so it was bubbles, but but yeah, I try to I try to get in some uh, some salt water when I can, especially like I said to me and Bubba, that to us that's grocery fishing. When it, we want to have a good dinner, and we definitely know where that fish came from versus a restaurant was probably get shipped over from China, you know. Versus I rather get it out of my own backyard, you know. That's what we do. We go salt water fishing and get us some some good eating groceries. You know so what, Benny? We we thank you for we thank you for you know all the little fishing reports and tips and definitely wish us luck tomorrow. Well, if you want to know about, uh, he's asking if, uh, you know, fish around the West side and Tim McQuana, uh, for bass, you want to know about West side fishing for bass. Ask Alex. That's, that's the West side guy right there. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, that, that's where I've lived. I'm actually, it's funny you should say that because my new place on the East side of town, I'm changing size. I'm tired of living over here, but, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, explore new areas of town, but, uh, yeah, we're, you know, living over here, you, there's, there's great ponds and little, little retention ponds are really, they're all over the place. 
and uh, you can catch good sized bass out of them. Yeah, argyle. Yeah. Most of the stuff over there, Benny, that I do for uh, you know fishing for for bass is uh, I don't know probably Doctor's Lake and South. Uh, if I'm going on the west side of the river, on the east side of the river for bass, about as far north as I'd go is uh, Goodbees. But you know anything, it seems like Main River over there is not great for bass. Uh, anytime I'm up like around like Temaquana, that that kind of stuff is always I'm I'm like you know I'm saltwater fishing honestly uh i mean you heard joe earlier was referencing bassing for babies uh the guy that won well, i thought i had big fish uh for the tournament or trash fish sorry not big fish trash fish um with like a six pound plus uh bowfin mudfish and some joker from georgia was fishing up there around Timaquana and had like a 10 pound red <laughs> Uh, so anytime that I'm over on that side of the river, uh, up around Timaquana, I'm always saltwater fishing myself, but my understanding, I got a buddy of mine that uh, lives over there. Uh, he, he says it's a lot like what I do around Pottsburg, which is brackish, uh, where you can catch kind of both. Um, I never done much of it over there. I always saltwater fish over there. The only uh, thing I've, like towards that area, I guess, um, that I've fished, it's actually on base, and only military people can get to it. it there's this cove. Um, I'm pretty sure Joe knows what I'm talking about. There's this cove on base, and if you go back into this creek, I actually have a video of me fishing there, and uh, they've got some really nice bass in there. Um, so, I mean, if you guys are military or anything, uh, definitely check out that back creek at NAS Jacks. As far as Tim Aquana goes, uh, the only thing I ever done there, like, was it Fort Caroline Road? There's a boat ramp that's at a, at a dead end road there. I went out there at night and floundered gig that. Believe it no, or not. that's yeah. He's talking about uh, like Ortega River, kind of Tim Aquana, like Ortega. Uh, area. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. No, no, I haven't. I haven't touched that. Uh, as far as West Side fishing goes, uh, if you go to where uh, like Pritchard Road exit is. And they got the West Side Industrial Park back there, yep. and UPS and everything. Yep. Uh, off of 295, I grew up fishing those ponds, and they are slap full of gigantic tilapia. Uh, tilapia and some ponds have mudfish, but there's also some good bass in there. When I was younger, we used to catch five and six pounders out of there. But I think the problem is uh, they get hit so hard, and a lot of people that they're fishing them are out there fishing for. Uh, dinner they're eating those bass so you know hopefully yeah. the you know the trend of conservation is catching on and uh a lot you know like, i know when i fish them i, I thought unless they're stunted i throw them back you know especially if they're a good one i mean the the bigger ones that's the ones you want to throw back that's your spawners that's the females that's the ones that's going to provide the next generation you know if they're now if they're uh looking like a skeleton and whatnot then yeah, those are the ones you probably would want to go ahead and eat. And uh, apparently, a, a ferret has broken into Tim's house and crawled up his arm. This is my new puppy Scooter. <laughs> what an <laughs> original name! Would, yeah, he would name it something like Scooter. <laughs> <laughs> He's a weenie. I see yep. that. He's a <laughs> sissy dog. He's like a weenie Rottweiler. Hey, hold on, like hold the- on. I'll show you a real. Oh, oh no. Yeah, we just got him. He's our he's my new fishing buddy. I'm gonna take him fishing next weekend. And ho- who knows? He might be good luck. We'll see. You gonna take him fishing? Where's he gonna use the bathroom? Here, Timmy. Here, here you go. Oh god. Timmy, that as, as, good. Look at him. as a dog. As a dog, Tim. My as god, that dog. dog's head is bigger than Tim's as dog. A dog. <laughs> ain't that ain't that one of the one they call them mountain dogs or whatever? Yeah, that's a it's a Bernese mountain dog. Oh She's about 120 pounds. Yeah. Mine's, mine's with his mine's with his grandpa right now. And she's uh, like, "What are you doing, man? Just let me back inside." I got a cat. I got a cat named Puppy around here somewhere. You got fish in your tank, dude. Speaking of fish, and this is how much of a horrible friend I am, Dinsmore. Today was the first day I watched your uh, your ice fishing quotation mark ice fishing video. Yeah, and you got some big freaking bluegill in there. Yeah, yeah, you got some big old bluegill. Those were uh, those were the common size. Believe it or not, there's some in there that are pushing two pounds now. Like the original stalkers, like the, the ones that were adults from my grandfather's pond, they're uh-huh. pushing two pounds. They were huge. Uh, I put a picture up on how big my bluegill grown in one year of my dad holding a red breast. He had to have two hands to hold it. It was like Ooh. the size of a dinner plate. Good um, Lord. Right. And that's like I said, that was one of the original stalkers. There's like 
19 of them in there and they had the whole place to themselves and they're getting feed thrown at them so they could eat till their little hearts content. So they just went crazy until the uh, 600 bluegill showed up that I stocked in there, which have now grown to thousands probably. They're big. So yeah, they're, they're big. And uh, that's a trip I want to add with Bubba. Uh, we need to go do some red breast fishing on the St. Mary's. Yeah. Oh, and and no catfish. Oh. Well, uh, I know all about that. Yep. Guys, uh, if you're watching us right now, you know, feel free to tune in to the chat over there on the side. Don't be shy at all. You know, let us know where you're from. If you got any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you went fishing this weekend or you've been fishing since the last show, you know, let us know how you're doing. Let us know what your experiences are. Like I said, Benny's been going at it since we've been on here. <laughs> and we I like love it. seeing him over there. Yeah, I, I we like that. We, like we that. love that, guys. Guys, we love it when y'all interact with us over there and we're talking stuff. We got Jimmy S. We got Benny. We got uh, Timmy, senior chief, that is on there telling us how how good it's been. Apparently, he was killing them at Nassau Sound. Yeah. Here, you know what? Let me look up this uh, the fish. Let me go ahead and shout this guy out real quick. That way, uh, I'm a good person. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba, do you know where Bubba, do you know where Ducks Pond is on San Jose? Or no, San Juan? No, uh, no, but I can find it, I'm sure. And I lost a big one at Pope Duval Ponds on top water. Oh, All right, there guys, you go. Check this out. Look at this guy. Oh wow. That's a slot red for sure there. Yeah. Nathan, here's your shout out, man. I got you. Is he on <laughs> is he on the grams? I don't know. Well, yeah, this is Instagram. So if you guys yeah. want to follow his Instagram. I don't know as he holds it up. Here, <laughs> check him out nathan hughes right there good red that elite there you go support a veteran subscribe to his uh instagram yep absolutely <laughs> oh yeah uh here, side here, note here, 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 here I'll, I'll keep talking just so it stays on the on the computer but yeah pretty keep good on. so that's what you get to do when you're a senior chief huh? you got to go fishing <laughs> yeah well, I gotta, I, not everybody I, gets to work this weekend yeah, I gotta get there. Uh, side note: I know we go off topic all the freaking time on here, but uh, just a little personal note, guys. Today, uh, I re-enlisted in the United States Navy for four more years, and it is the last time. Hopefully, that will re-enlist. Uh, and next time it'll be retirement. Well, um, almost at twenty years. Finally, I've done like going on seventeen years in the United States Navy. Congratulations and thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Uh, I look forward to it. And then I can be like all these other retired Navy guys in the Bass Club and buy a brand new bass boat because I have no mortgage payment and just go fishing every day while everybody else is at work. I cannot wait. <laughs> YouTube videos out the butt then. <laughs> Nonstop. We're going to go live. Freaking 60 year old Dennis Moore Outdoors with a freaking assist walker uh, to get out of the damn scooter. Dude, if, if we're still putting up YouTube videos when we're 60, we're, it's going to be some interesting stuff. <laughs> oh, buddy. I have a million subscribers. Speaking of a million subscribers, One Rod or One Reel, I believe he's the first fishing YouTuber to hit a million subscribers, which, of course, he's way over that now. Didn't Luckers TV do it? I saw that he's over a million. He's over a million? I thought it was One Rod or One Reel. Luckers actually got over a million a, a while ago, actually, yeah. Nathan's got July 2020. Anybody got that? Uh, Nathan, you got to you want to elaborate on that a little bit I was more. Say, oh, is his retiring date, I guess. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, he might be retiring then. Uh, thanks, Benny. He's in the Marines. Oh, he's in the Marines and the Army. Oh man, thank you, thank you, Benny, for your service. I appreciate thank it, you, Benny. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get there. I mean, I can't wait. Oh, so uh, Nathan, Nathan's still on. Okay, cool. Awesome. Oh yeah, so yeah, he retires in 2020. I retire uh, June 2022. Just so you guys know, if y'all want to get me a, a retirement Phoenix bass boat, I would, I would not object. Get you a one tenth size scale one. Okay, yeah, yeah. like a little a RC little model. model. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Um, guys, just a little eye candy. I picked up a new bait. Uh, my first tournament is going to be the last weekend in January on the lower part of the St. Johns River. So, lower part of the St. Johns River. Uh, Lake George area, so if you got any hookups, I wouldn't mind it. You know, help me help me get my uh, tournament winner for the year, so I can secure my spot in the classic. But you know, like I'm getting the boat ready for the tournament season. Also, uh, I'm updating my tackle box, so 
I was looking around and everybody's talking about like I have I have walking base. I have spooks. I uh, love uh, Sarah spooks for my walking base. I have Rebel pop R's, whopper ploppers, toads, everything. So I wanted to get something that has been around for a long time, uh, as far as the type of bait that it is, not necessarily the brand, and give it a try. And I got the Gunfish One Seventeen. I've seen the guys in Robin or not Robin. Guys in Lake George just kill bass in the uh, jetties with these right here, and uh, hybrid cool. stripers, and it's in what they call the American uh, shad color. So a lot of a lot of shine to it, a lot of flash. So hopefully in that tannic water they can pick it up between that, and it's got instead of a bunch of little rattles in it, it's just one big knocker in it, like a one knocker, like a um, like a lipless crankbait, and what what helps that it helps you where you're casting because that weight will roll forward when you cast. They give it more distance, and of course, when you work it, it helps with that side to side action, have that momentum. Go ahead, Timmy. You're just dying to say something. I really am because I bought the exact bait. It's a pencil popper, and yeah. it's actually, what Justin Atkins won the Forest Wood Cup, not this past year, but the year before, because it's mimicking what the blueback herring were doing. Um, so that right there is actually the only reason why I bought that thing. It's huge, but it catches so much fish and it, it's just a great bait. So definitely check it out guys. Pencil popper. Well, while we're on eye candy, I want to show you guys the best fishing flip flops in the world. There it oh, is. Lord. There, there it is. is. Let yeah. him talk. I, so it stay on the screen. I want to see this thing. This is uh, they, they are not super comfortable, <laughs> but they are super cool. I can lip my flip flops. Uh, it's even got an eye on the bottom of it. Uh, my sister got me these for uh, for Christmas. My my sister, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to be a yearly thing or what, but she got me these for Christmas last year. So, oh, you oh, one more time for me, honey. That's, that's 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 flip flop, yeah, <laughs> that's the flip flops there. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, she got so, me some grass ones last year, and then she got me the fish ones this year. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to see what next year is going to be. I was about to say, now we got to figure out what next year is going to be. Hey, wow. Timmy, just remind your wife that uh, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and you got your eye on those fish, fish and flip flops. <laughs> yeah, honey. Hi, fish and flip flops, huh? Oh, yeah. There we go. What's that? What you gonna get your fish candies? Up. You gonna get some Swedish fish candies for Valentine's Day? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I want that big freaking pillow that's a largemouth bass. See yeah, so you can put that in a live well and pull it out at tournament time. No, so you can snuggle up with it with his body pillow. That's oh. right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, when do we go on uh, peacock bass fishing? That I don't actually, know. We need we need we need to plan. We need to start looking at that and planning that and making uh, vacation time. Like I said. Me fishing all these tournaments throughout the year, it's going to be hard. It's kind of like, I wish we could like piggyback, you know, like while I'm already down there in the south fishing Okeechobee, just have you guys freaking meet me. Yeah, so we got plenty around you. Well, are we fishing that tournament, Joe? What tournament? The What, the Bassin' for Babies? No, the Okeechobee one. Uh, Yeah, I'm fishing. I don't know. Right now, uh, they're, they're debating because the water level in Okeechobee is kind of iffy. It's not really that high. And uh, if it goes any lower, then they're probably gonna they're probably gonna kink that tournament and move it somewhere else. Mm. I would love to go back to Kissimmee. I love Kissimmee. Kissimmee is nice. I don't know what it is about South Florida, man. Like, uh, it spoils me when I go down there. Like, you'll catch you can catch thirty bass in a day on a good day in a lot of them places. No problem. You can sit in one stretch of pads and just wear out two pounders all day with a random big one in there. And then I come back up here to Jacksonville. And I just had to grind all day to try to get like three fish. It's crazy. Uh, two fish last time we went out, if my memory serves me. Well, guys, listen, I got to walk. I got to walk my dog. He's humping the hell out of a hedgehog right now. So, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so Benny asks, what happened to Kingry? Uh, sure, a lot of you kayak guys out there, they're subscribers to mine and probably subscribers to Alex and everybody. Uh, remember there used to be a guy, he was like the king of Jacksonville inshore YouTube, uh, kayak fishing videos. His name was King Ray. He looked like freaking Hank Williams Jr. Every time he wore his Ray-Bans, he had a beard, didn't edit out anything. He let the cuss words fly. He's punching crabs in the face, all that good stuff. King Ray, he just got burned out on it. I mean, there's really, that's the short answer to it. He said he just got tired of, you know, doing the editing and, Oh crap! The back the camera's dead. Let me put the pole down and change the battery out, and 
he said he just really go fish and he just he just got tired of it but i mean he was all his way to the top i mean i love his videos i got to go fishing with him a couple times i still go fishing with him i just that i record and he doesn't he just has more fun he just goes out there to do it uh he's got into gardening uh that's been his his facebook updates here lately he shows like man check out these peppers i'm growing but uh king reef if you come ever come across this video man we we definitely miss you on youtube i wish you could bring it back i know you upgraded your kayak and got a new kayak and we all know you for the blue malibu and you upgraded and got you a camo one like mine but uh if you ever watching this king reef came back but yeah that's the short answer he just he got burnt out on doing all the editing so if he can find himself a cameraman he'd probably come back to youtube well listen guys i gotta get going i gotta walk the dog but good seeing y'all Alex, we need to catch up. Maybe go fishing, and I'll talk to y'all later. Okay. Up, yeah, that's fine. We all we all got to get going. We're we done. Went twenty minutes over our uh, slot. <laughs> Jimmy, yes, I've always wanted to go peacock bass fishing in South Florida, two hours away from where I live. So maybe over the summer. Right, definitely for us. For us, I think it'd be more of a four or five hour trip for us to get yeah. down there. But yeah, yeah, definitely, I would love to. All of us get like a hotel and go down there and catch. Well, some Timmy, peacock we'll like see you later, Timmy. Timmy, go. yeah, go ahead and go walk your uh, ferret chihuahua weenie dog. <laughs> Sounds good, guys. And, hey, I, I might give you guys a secret spot on where to catch peacock bass. All right. Well, well you better be it. coming with us. I know. I'll, I'll take you guys to some good spots. All right. All right. Guys. See you later. All right. See you, Timmy. Bye. Bye. Guys, that was Timmy. Definitely, at least he got to come in and talk with us. For the majority of the show. I'm, yeah, I'm proud of up. Timmy. He I'm proud up. of him. He showed up when, when, when it was time to play. So, uh, guys, we're going ahead, and if there's no other, no questions, I guess we're just going to go ahead and cut out for the night. Let you uh, get ready for work tomorrow. Me and Bubba are going to get ready to go fishing tomorrow. So, we'll be thinking of you when we're out there uh, reeling in those trout and just sitting out there on the water. <laughs> yeah. So, Alex, uh, dinner. Alex, have fun, man. We'll, we'll oh, miss you. Oh, yeah. Benny, appreciate it. We're gonna uh, appreciate you hanging out with us, and yeah, we're hopefully we get the uh, the good luck tomorrow. Hopefully, we break the streak. Right, we'll see guys, how it goes. Uh, if you enjoy the show, if you enjoy seeing Bait Shop Talk Live, you know, please leave us a thumbs up. It definitely helps us out. We enjoy doing it for you. We'd love to get more people on here. We'd like to get some more guests on here. So, if you have any questions or any topics you want to bring up in the next Bait Shop Talk, you can go ahead and you can send me an email, or you can check me out on Facebook, Facebook Densmore Outdoors, or you can send me it at Densmore Outdoors at gmail.com if you guys want any topics that you want to see, or uh, you know, just questions or stuff. Well, because we would love to, I mean, this. This show is catered for y'all. Yeah, we talk about our fishing trips and everything, but we like to bring information. Uh, we just need to know what questions you want information on. We'll be glad, happy to bring it to you. We'll even go out of our way to research it and everything. So, all of you that stuck with us the whole hour and a half, almost for the show. <laughs> You know, definitely thanks for sticking around with us. Uh, Rusty B, Jimmy, Benny, uh, Benny, all of you guys, Nathan, all, all of you, we, we definitely thank you for hanging out with us and, you know, talking it up in the over there in the chat. So we'll see you out there next time. Join in uh, next month for Base Shop Talk. Same time, second Sunday of every month, 7 p.m. We'll see you there. Y'all take care. Later. All right, boys. Take it easy.